This is Matthew Donald to let you know that I have a Patreon at patreon.com slash Matthew Donald. There you can find bonus content for my shows, The Rit Wit and Paleo Bites. Buy two shows, bonus content for both of them. This month we're talking about Zero Ranger. Zero Ranger. Do you not know what Zero Ranger is? It's what Power Rangers came from. All the stock footage of the fights came from Zero Ranger. Zero Ranger. You should check it out. Link is in the description. Thank you for your support. And have a wonderful day! (coughs) I'm so sorry. Roar, growl, snarl, bellow. Roar. Welcome to Paleo Bites, the podcast that's like the Triassic period. It's try hard, it's full of ass, and it's freaking <laughs> sick. <laughs> try ass sick. I think I pulled a muscle with that stretch. <laughs> <laughs> To pull an ass muscle. <laughs> uh, I, I've been sitting here for a while. Actually, no, I haven't. I'm, I'm, my, my ass muscles are nice. And uh, My name's Matthew Dahl, and each week <laughs> I and a rotating series of guest co-hosts talk about and parade a genius of prehistoric animal, be it dinosaur, mammal, arthropod, and so on. <laughs> this week I'm joined by my very own uh, ass muscle specialist. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, That implies actually bad things. No. Uh, uh, <laughs> I love it, though, because so many of my friends like are in, like, very long-term monogamous relationships and have been for, like, many, many years. So the fact that I go on, like, a first date every other month or something, people are, like... Like, I feel like I get this reputation in my friend group as, like, well, Laura's the one who, like, dates around all the time. And I'm like, I went on a first date, like, three weeks ago. Yeah. Like, there wasn't even a second date. Like, I don't really... No. <laughs> like... <laughs> uh, by the way, a peek behind the curtain. Oh, by the way, this is Laura Owsley. Hello. <laughs> uh, we met on Bumble. So... It's true. <laughs> so, you know. And then I found out I was into women. I mean, that's okay. <laughs> that's a-okay. Okay. I mean, it is so much different out there for, like, now that I've been introduced to queer dating and mm-hmm. I'm, like, looking back on straight dating, like, it is completely different. Like, queer dating gets this reputation for being so, like... Uh, Kinky or something? Intense, or... I yeah. guess. So, like, there's a stereotype that queer women in relationships move way too fast. Oh, right? Yeah. So it's the idea of you hauling you're moving in together after, like, the second or third date. Is that just from, like, horny dudes that are just, like, sort of, like, imagining when girls hang out, they have pillow fights in their underwear? So, like... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've had so many pillow yeah, fights in my just, underwear. It's, it's just a standard Tuesday. <laughs> right, right. I just do it all the time. But, no, so it's, like, we imagine, like, oh, yeah, when there's a lesbian relationship, it immediately goes to the sex. and like an So I feel like that's, like... The stereotype from, like, the straight community is, like, that it's, like, over-sexualized. Really, like, within, like, the queer uh, community, I suppose, a lot of, like, queer women relationships are more, like, oh, yes, now we're already acting like we've been married for 50 years, even though, like, we met, like, three weeks ago. Well, I mean, I've heard, like, a gay man and, like, a sassy old lady, their personalities are not terrible dissimilar like, so it's like was that john mulaney said at one point like everyone get out of my way i'm off to feed my birds <laughs> i <laughs> love that <laughs> <laughs> that and the uh meme that comes around every tune of the like me during the rest of the year being gay is not my entire personality me in june move i'm gay <laughs> 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 okay, so dinosaur related question. If you could imagine any dinosaur as lesbians, <laughs> <laughs> imagine a lesbian relationship between the dinosaurs. <laughs> Which ones? <laughs> Which ones? All right, so you're going to have to help me out here. Okay. So I'm thinking like cave dwellers, right? Okay. Like two like cave dwellers that like really only come out like hibernators. Okay, right. so uh, there is a dinosaur. I actually did an episode on it fairly recently called Nanooksaurs. It, mm. It's a polar bear lizard, is what it means. It's I love that. Yeah, it's polar like bear a, lizard? it's a tyrannosaurid that's kind of smallish and lives very up north, like it's in Alaska. And Nanook means is a nu- huh. Inuit word for polar bear. So, oh. so 
Yeah, so it probably hibernated, we think. So Okay, okay. So yeah. I mean that's a theory. I mean it's a hypothesis. We have no evidence for it, but we're assuming. <gasps> I mean it would make sense, especially like winter months and somewhere as harsh as mm-hmm. I mean the northern regions of Canada. Well and like even like you know, yes, back in dinosaur times it the like, world was the the climate was a lot hotter and there were no permanent polar mm-hmm. ice caps. But also Alaska was actually up further up north back then than it is now. Oh, interesting. And it would have been very cold in the winter. There would have been snow. To the point where a lot of people think mm-hmm. that Nanooksaurus had white feathers. So it kind of looked like a polar bear. Oh. <laughs> so. See, see, okay, so this works. So, like, the white feathers. Is there something that's similar-ish uh, that would have, like, brown feathers? Maybe something that, like, cave dweller that you could think of that's maybe, like, closer to, like, uh, the uh, equator, maybe. Equator, okay, hmm. Uh, well, it's hard to tell, you know, what the colors are of feathers sure, sure. for other stuff. Brown feather, I don't know, maybe like. <sighs> I don't know of any like, uh, di- like anyone. The only one I can think of that have brown feathers is again another northern one. And again, okay. this is only hypothetical. But Pachyrhinosaurus, it's a Triceratops like relative right. that we think might have had feathers. Okay. Uh, it kind of looks like a muskox kind of. See, this works. Yeah. Yeah. So... Yeah. So there's a uh, joke that, like, in every queer woman relationship, you have to have uh, a blonde and a brunette. Ah, uh, okay. Because in any, like, movie that features two lesbian women, it's always a blonde and a brunette. Well, no, I, I kind of get that. Like, I like seeing couples that look, like, the two of them look different. If you look at, like, The Princess Bride, for instance, boy, at the beginning, it looks like they're related. <laughs> a little bit, doesn't <laughs> like, it? Yeah. Two white, blonde, pretty people. <laughs> Same shade yes. of blonde hair. Yeah. He doesn't have a beard yet. I mean, neither did I. Yeah. Well... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay. <laughs> I get it. Uh, uh, well, you know, I, I, I know a few bears in my day. But <laughs> speaking of polar so bears. So adventurous, man. Yeah. So, okay. So, okay. So I like this. This is our, our <laughs> new lesbian romantic comedy involving dinosaurs and a Nanooksaurus and a <laughs> Pachyrhinosaurus. I mean, I would absolutely watch this. And the nice thing is, yeah, they lived in the same time and place. So. See, like, I think this is a children's book waiting to happen. Now, Nanooksaurus was a predator, and uh, mm. Pachyrhinosaurus was a prey, so... I mean, that works, right? You've yeah. got, like, the more feminine one, and the more, like, maybe masculine well, one. Well, and also it could be, like, a forbidden romance. Like the, Ooh, there I we mean, go. I mean, it's already kind of forbidden, because, you know, we don't know how fundamentalist these dinosaurs are. It's true. Well, I mean, <laughs> all queer relationships are forbidden when you're just, like, really bad at dating. Yeah. Like... Okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> We're talking about Incisivosaurus mm-hmm. or Incisor Lizard, the bucktooth thing itself. I am so excited to talk about this thing. Matt sent me a picture while I was uh, actually at like, uh, yeah. a, like Labor Day, whatever the most recent uh, holiday yeah, was. Yeah, Labor Day. Yeah, Labor Day. Yeah. I was like... Um, for Labor Day weekend, I was spending some time with my family, and I, like, almost gasped when I saw this picture that Matt <laughs> sent me. Yeah, because she specifically is anything fluffy and dumb, and I'm like, got it. <laughs> I mean, I am a sucker for anything fluffy and dumb. That's why I do so much pet sitting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, but pets are great. Okay, so Incisivosaurus, <laughs> it means incisor lizard. Uh, type is an oviraptorosaur, a group of the theropod <laughs> dinosaurs traditionally meat eaters that evolved a more herbivorous oh, okay. diet. Oh, okay. what does that mean? Uh, like plant, eat, plant eating. Right, right, right. But like, so like they were carnivores and then they kind of morphed into being more like... I'll get into this, actually. Oh, okay. So, uh, size 2.6 to 3.3 feet slash 0.8 to 1 meters long. Okay, so not super big. Yeah, 5 to 10 pounds, 2.3 to 4.6 kilograms. Oh, yeah. that's a little. Yeah, 3 feet long. Like, that's like your arm. So, it could be standing on this table. And... It could be my arm, but it's you said 10 pounds? Yeah, 5 to 10 pounds. Okay. Yeah. Dinosaurs are also very lightweight. Like, mammals are very dense compared to dinosaurs. Oh, interesting. Like, you know, a T-Rex, despite mm. being 20 feet tall and 40 feet long, weighs about the same as an elephant, which is only huh. 10 feet tall. <laughs> Huh. Yeah. That's kind of brain breaking to think about. Isn't it? it? Like But I so this dinosaur then strikes me as kinda of like the petite like uh designer lap dogs. Mm-hmm. Right? Oh yeah, well there's a lot of them kinda of like that. There's a lot of dinosaurs that make a great pet. You can imagine them just right? like getting on your lap and curling up, you know. Yeah, that'd be so cute. Yeah, like a cat, you know. Right? And but like a bird that also preen their feathers, you know. <laughs> yeah, then you could like take them like to the park or something and play ultimate frisbee. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, I'd love that. I used to have a book called How to Keep Dinosaurs. <laughs> had some great photoshopped illustrations for Aww. Yeah, and I had a bunch of different dinosaurs. Sounds like a kid's book, was it? No, actually, no. It was treated treat super seriously. I mean, like, oh. it was also tongue-in-cheek. But, right. Uh, diet, we think it was an herbivore. Um, okay. It's hard to tell with the raptor or swords, which I'll we'll get into. Uh, time mm. early, Cretaceous, 127 to 125 billion years ago. Okay. So, the, well before, like, Velociraptor and T-Rex and what have you. Uh, right, all right. That was late Cretaceous. This is early Cretaceous. The Cretaceous was a large period of time, man. How long was the Cretaceous? About roughly? 80 million years. Oh. Like, let me put it this way. The time, like, the end of the Cretaceous was 65 million years ago, which means there was more time between the beginning of the Cretaceous and the end of the Cretaceous than the end of the Cretaceous and now. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, so Land Before Time lied to us. All these creatures did not exist at the same time. Oh, hell no. <laughs> like, okay. Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. His location was in China. Uh, was what was found. Mm-hmm. Described in 2002. Pop culture appearances. The TV miniseries Prehistoric Park. Um, yeah. Dinosaur Dan. Whatever that is. Dino Dan. Mm-hmm. I think it's a Canadian show. Um and mm. Jigonotosaurus, a CGI kids show I've seen advertised on Disney Plus that I feel like I should watch, even though it's probably meant for preschoolers. Hey, it <laughs> yeah. sounds like fun, though. Yeah. yeah, I must consume all dinosaur content. Consume! Yes, yes, yes. I mean, you have to be the expert on it. Yes. You know, there's some dinosaur stuff that I still haven't seen and I really have no interest in seeing. I've, you know the good dinosaur, the Pixar movie? Oh, yes. I still haven't seen it and I have Neither zero I. interest in seeing it. Really? Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, I'm sure, it, like, it's Pixar, right? So, like, it's got to be pretty good. Yeah, like, I've heard, like, even the worst Pixar movie is still pretty good. Right? Like, like even Cars 2, like, has its fans. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, I don't know. I just... Or what's the, like, newest Cars one where it's, like, Tokyo Drift? The Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift. (laughs) 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 I swear to God, there's like Cars 7 or something where like Lightning McQueen goes to Tokyo. There was like a Mater short where he went to Tokyo. Maybe that's what it is. And by new, I saw it like before I saw Bolt (laughs) in 2008. (laughs) A whopping 13 years ago. (laughs) So, it was in Sizzville, Source. Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. Our... Uh, okay, so fluffy idiot. Yes, when my co-host Laura told me here she wanted to cover creatures that were, in her own words, fluffy and dumb. Yep. There was one dinosaur that came to mind immediately. Buck teeth are one of the dumbest looking things in the world. Oh, they're so. I mean, <laughs> any character looks dumber with buck teeth. Oh, absolutely. It's like it makes him look like a big gross gopher. Like <laughs> it's also got kind of like a like a, weird like it looks like a a grown out mohawk that's like you couldn't decide between like. A mohawk and the, uh, what's the business in the front party in the back? Oh, yeah, I, know, I don't know the name of what you're uh, talking about. Uh, but yeah, mullet. like, the, yeah, mullet, yes, yes. Well, that's, like, the, that's the feathers it has, but yeah, like, we're just talking about the buck teeth specifically. Like, like, it, it, like, it makes you speak with a whistle. Like, people with buck teeth, they speak with a whistle, they sleep mm, with their cousins, they true. talk about how woke culture is ruining society for poor, oppressed, straight white men. Oh. Uh, I'm sorry, are we talking about a dinosaur? <laughs> I mean, really, the poor. The poor white men. Poor straight white men. Poor straight white men. I mean, uh, as as a lesbian, you know, um, well, you are white, but you are a woman. Like, you can relate, right? You ah. you understand our uh, the the struggles we go through. Oh, of course. <laughs> like, oh no, you you're don't so understand. Oppressed. That's the thing. That's like, you the don't, problem. You yeah. don't understand. You you're a woman. You get everything. That's That's, I mean, really, as a as a woman, uh, men are just so oppressed. Yeah, well, especially white straight men. Oh yes, I mean, just really, it's not like the entire world was built for them. <laughs> I legitimately <laughs> saw someone on Reddit come, like, it was talking about like, uh, what was it like? There was a it was a comment to a trailer or something for a movie, and it was like like a black woman that was the lead and then the comment was like oh, a black woman is a main character in 2021 never seen that before and I'm like huh a white man is a main character from 10,000 BC to 2020 never seen that before <laughs> like and I mean even like oh boo hoo you want to go see a film featuring a straight white man the new James Bond comes out and yeah it's like yeah y'all be fine exactly. there's stuff for you to watch anyways so in says of a source is another member of the oviraptiosaurs a group we haven't talked about on the show yet for some reason, even though they're very interesting and very weird. Huh. Uh, see, when when people talk about the different types of dinosaurs, they usually say meat eaters and plant eaters, right? Right. So, uh, well, it's not quite that simple. It turns out when someone asks you what are the two types of dinosaurs, the correct answer is the Saurischians, which are lizard-hipped, and oh. the Ornith- Ornithians, or bird-hipped. Um, the lizard-hipped dinosaurs right. includes the theropods, which are basically all the meat-eating dinosaurs, and the sauropods, which is the technical name for the long necks. 
Oh, so those okay. are the, those are the lizard hipped ones. The bird hipped ones include all the non long neck plant eating dinosaurs, so like the duck bills, the horn dinosaurs, like Triceratops, the Stegosaurus, sure. all and Kyosaurus. Super confusingly, guess which group of dinosaurs the birds evolved from? That's right, the lizard hipped ones. <laughs> so, oh. <laughs> Yeah, I did not see that twist coming. In fact, cladistically speaking, birds are still considered cerisians or lizard hip dinosaurs, even though they're freaking birds and have bird hips. What the hell? <laughs> yeah, this feels like a troll to me. Like, somebody in the paleontology community was like, you know, it's really going to f*** with people. <laughs> like, <laughs> anyways, <must> claim. <laughs> theropods are one of the major group of cerisians. Right. And that includes all the meat-eating dinosaurs like T-Rex, Velociraptor, which you just heard the noise of there just a few seconds ago. Right. <laughs> um, Spinosaurus, Allosaurus, and what have you. However, just because all the meat-eaters were theropods, that doesn't mean all the theropods were meat-eaters. You got, oh, okay, so it's like a, a square rectangle yes, situation. Yes, so you got some groups, specifically in the Solarosaur clade, that it includes the ones that evolved into birds, and they started doing more leaf eating. Hmm. So like the Therizinosaurs, these are ones with long necks and long claws. Oh, okay. And the Oviraptorosaurs, which includes the namesake Oviraptor, and this guy, Incisivosaurus. Ah. So, the thing is, we're not actually sure what these guys ate, because most of them have the audacity, the sheer audacity, to have no teeth. Wait, I thought they had the... The... This one has buck teeth. Right. Most of them don't. Oh. Like oviraptor. Oh. Have your <laughs> the way he said like oh scandalous. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm thinking like <gasps> like uh like the oldest shark in the world yes. has like almost no teeth left. Oh, because it's, it's old. Just, like, gums. How that poor shark? How's it still alive? What is it eating? How's it kill? I. Uh, it probably just does the whale thing and like opens up its mouth and fish just like feel pity and are like, yeah, it's my time to go. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've seen this shared on Facebook. It's like this 512 year old shark and like I've looked up on Snopes. Is this true? It actually might be. <laughs> like, mm. <laughs> I have no idea. I just take everything I see on the internet as fact. I mean, that shark, so it's been around 512 years ago. That was like just on the cusp of when colonialism started. I feel like that shark should have done something and really? it didn't. <laughs> I mean, like, this shark basically supported children working in factories is what I'm hearing. Exactly. Like, okay, it was a shark and it lived in the Atlantic. And How did the colonists get to North the Atlantic? The Atlantic. And you know what? If our friend, our buck tooth dino friend, were still around, they would have opposed colonialism. Yes, they would not stand for this. Even though I just said earlier that characters with buck teeth talk about how woke culture is ruining society yeah, for straight true. white men. So <laughs> Maybe they would have welcomed the European settlers and been like... It's like, please, please, come. Because like, again, it has come. buck teeth. Come. <laughs> come enslave them. Kill them. Smallpox them. <laughs> Smallpox. You know what's a great idea? It's just like farming the same crop in the same area and like killing everybody in like a 300 foot vicinity yeah all right so they have so a lot of these have no teeth in fact oviraptor mm. the namesake of this family means egg thief you know like ovis like o oh. like ovaries right right <laughs> yeah. right so um because we used to think they eat the eggs of other dinosaurs you probably you'd probably recognize oviraptor if you see a picture of it like it's kind of has a weird crest on its head kind of long neck yes i think i remember this in one of those in one of those dinosaur movies. I just remember the egg thief. Yeah, so remember Disney's dinosaur? Yes. Yeah, it's at the very beginning. So. That's what it is. Yeah, so. so. I remember thinking as a kid, like, that's not fair. You can't just eat the baby eggs. Yeah. Let's see, like, we used to think that because uh, we found it, like, on a, a nest, like, that we thought were the eggs of another dinosaur, Protoceratops. Turns out it was its own eggs. Its own oh. <laughs> we just immediately assume we, it's a predator of other, like, it's like, those can't be your eggs. <laughs> those can't be your children. Yeah. Like, uh, again, oh. again, the politics here. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. So, uh, so. I've had weirdly, like, I've been a nanny a handful of times in my life, and once in a while I'll have people be like, well, you look awfully young to have all of these kids, and I'm like, yeah, well, they, they're they not mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, no, like, when I was at the famous coffee shop that should not be named for legal reasons, mm. I was working at the drive through This person came in, and she asked her, you know, if she was doing anything this weekend because I like to start conversations, you know, while they're waiting. Sure, sure, sure. And she said, oh, yeah, I'm hanging out with uh, 
uh, my kids, like, it's one of theirs' 12th birthday, and I'm like, wow, you look amazing for having a 12-year-old. She's like, oh, it's stepkid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, well, cool. <laughs> How cool. Because she all... looked our age. <laughs> like, so. Oh. I mean. <laughs> Which I guess 30. You could have a 12-year-old kid. Yeah, you could be 18. Easily. Yeah, you'd be 18 when you had the kids, so. I mean, yeah, there's definitely, like, I've been getting recently, actually, at the ripe old age of 27, a <laughs> decent amount of, like, Oh, so you're like not married yet? I'm like, uh, no, nope. no. At the ripe old age of 27, I am getting myself to a nunnery. Another c- customer that the famous coffee shop today actually uh, said they were going to a wedding and like they're, like that her daughter was getting married. And this person mm. looked young, so I asked how old her daughter was. She said 23, and I'm like, oh my god. Oh my god. I think I was 23 when I had my first girlfriend. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> like 23. I think I was. I was graduating college, but, like, I was so, like, I guess other human... No, I'm so worried about just getting this degree. <laughs> no, I get that. <laughs> like... Anyways, Oviraptor and Incessivosaurus. <laughs> so, Back to the subject at hand. Now we think that Oviraptor swords are mostly plant eaters, although eggs are probably not exempt from their diet. Uh... Ex- okay. Incisivosaurus, though, did have teeth. Once more, they had these two giant buck teeth at the front, like some sort of naked mole rat. <laughs> right, right. So, that... They were vegetarians, not necessarily vegans. Yeah, yes, yes, exactly. Like they, All right. They had such broad, flat teeth is a pretty good indicator this was a herbivore. They'd be fairly useless for killing or maiming, or even piercing through something like eggshells. So, yeah, the incisivosaurus oh, was probably um, probably a herbivore. Uh, it was also one of those dinosaurs with direct evidence of feathers. Like, oh, interesting. Like, we have found fossil imprints of several scattered oviraptor sore bones with feathery outlines in the rock, and currently they are believed to come from incisivosaurus. So there you go, Laura. Huh. Cute, fluffy, ah. and dumb looking. Cute, fluffy, dumb. It's got feathers. I'm so I'm so here for this. It's your perfect dinosaur. So it, let's rate your perfect dinosaur out of sixty five oh. million or whatever whatever you're gonna rate it. <laughs> out of sixty five million, I wanna get a look at this thing again. Yeah. Uh, really calculate the score here. Really. Uh I'm going to rate this about seven Dobbies. Dobbies. Does Dobby have buck teeth? I, you're right, I don't think he does, but yeah. like I He looks like, like he should. He looks like he should. When I was reading the books as a... So, he does not in the movies. Or, it's not in his description. But I remember reading the books as a kid and, like, I definitely pictured him with, like, some, like, oversized buck teeth. You know, like, it could be, like, a Mandela effect sort of thing. Like, we all... Like, yeah. like the fact that the Mr. Monopoly Man does not have a monocle. He doesn't? Exactly. We all assumed he has a monocle. He doesn't. Oh, wild. Mandela effect. <laughs> so... Oh, wild. <laughs> All right, somebody get Reddit on this. Okay. Yeah, so Dobby has buck teeth, except for he does his Mandela effect. But, like, Dobby's also kind of dopey looking. Like, yeah. I imagine these guys are pretty friend, would be fairly friendly, very sweet. They don't actually mean to hurt anybody. Yeah, the Incisivosaurus. Right, you know, that's kind of how I feel about Dobby. Like, yeah, no, I get that. So it's it, not like, all there. 100 but... and, was it 25 million years ago, and Incisivosaurus is, uh, Incisivosaurus is dying, and it's like, it's good to be friends with Harry Potter. And then it dies, and everyone's like, who? Who? <laughs> what? <laughs> that's, that's way in the future. <laughs> <laughs> this time travel portal is getting very messy. <laughs> oh, no, it's not time travel. He just knew. <laughs> oh, he just knew. <laughs> We're all just born with certain secrets of the universe uh, revealed to us. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, God. Oh, God. I want those secrets. Or I don't want those secrets. I don't want to know what the purpose is. <laughs> I want, like, very specific. Like, I would love to have, like, yeah, like, the true answer, like, it's like, f- something like, oh, well, like, the best, like, Fruit pie recipe. Is oh this. yes, like, those kind of absolute truths. Yes, yes. Yeah. not so much like what's the point of life. We all know it's forty two. Of but, course. But yeah, what is the best? Yeah, that like what is the best cookie shop? Exactly. <laughs> what is that one? Insomnia cookies. <laughs> Insomnia cookies or crumble is. We used to make these cookie cakes when I was uh, working at yeah. a different cookie store that shall not be named because it's a very major corporation. Uh. Uh, but Nestle I'm... Tool House. <laughs> tool House. Uh, <laughs> but I, I used to work there in college, and we would do these, like, cookie cakes. And I remember loving the cookie cake as a kid, yes. right? And then, like, making them, I was like, oh, this is just a giant cookie. Yeah, no, it's not a cake. I would tell people, like, I feel like this is, like, my adult rebellion. Because yeah. when I was a kid, I always wanted to just make one giant cookie. And my mom was always like, no. You can't do that. Isn't that the thing? Like, back then when you were a kid, the idea of rebelling as, like, sweets. 
Like, yep. like I know when I was. I a- mean, to be honest, as like a twenty-seven-year-old adult, the idea of rebelling is still sweet. <laughs> I guess. That's, <laughs> but no, but when I was a kid, I was like, the idea of rebelling. I'd go to the store, get a two-liter of Dr. Pepper, and just oh. like, drink it like a baby bottle. Right. <laughs> like, oh man, my like huge. Te- this is gonna show you how boring I was. My like big teenage rebellion was that I had a TV in my room, <gasps> and we weren't allowed to have TVs. Oh, in you rooms. absolute scandal! I know. I know. You I fiend. Think it was there for about two or three months before my mom found out but like <laughs> how'd you be sneak thin? a tv in <laughs> it was not a very large tv this was like where'd you get it uh, so this was like in the weird period of time that like people were buying a lot of tvs because like people would like yeah i'm slightly people larger people aren't TV. doing that still <laughs> this is true but like it was not a fancy tv mind you i think it's like diagonal like width or whatever oh was a full like nine inches like <laughs> oh okay and i'm assuming it was four by three too it was like square right? oh 100 percent. yeah none of this widescreen no no no. Uh, but it did have a built-in vhs player <gasps> oh, that worked like nah, twice. that's that's the height of luxury <laughs> i know <laughs> trust me i knew this and then eventually i got like a plug-in dvd player yeah oh i mean i tell you i was living large yep cool <laughs> anyways i'm gonna <laughs> write i'm gonna write incisivosaurus <laughs> Uh, oh man. Hmm. Okay, I, well, I like forty million because it's funny. Okay. Yeah, or, yeah. or I'm going to rate it a one. Uh, Rufus the. <laughs> <gasps> yes, the naked mole rat. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Speaking of shows that actually surprisingly hold up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anyways. Anyways, Where can people find you on the uh, social they can medias? Find, that's it for this week. You can find me on social media at Matthew Don Creator on Facebook, at Matthew Don 64 on Twitter, Matthew Don 64 on Instagram. I also I have an email. You can email me at Matt D at Matthew Don Creator.com. Uh, yeah, if you want to follow Laura on social media. If you want to follow me, you can look up at Thespian Laura, at T H E S P I N Laura. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm on Instagram. I'm on Twitter. Sometimes I'm funny. Most of the time I just post pictures of dogs. I mean, I think I'd wager most of the time you're funny. Aww. Like, I mean, to me, anyways. I don't know. What? Well, of course, I, I don't know who it's funny. I mean, our sense of humor is clearly skewed because I mean, we. Have you read that bad review that, that we got? Yeah, I showed you that bad I review. Did. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's like bottom of the barrel jokes. I'm like, you're not wrong. <laughs> you're not wrong. I mean, but like, you know, sometimes the bottom of the barrel jokes are some pretty good stuff, I think. Yeah. In my totally not biased opinion. Yeah, because here I am. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Two episodes in, and it's 7 30. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's power through. All Next right, one. All right, I'm okay. excited. All right, let's say I have another podcast called The Ritwit. Two twits talk about reading. I have another book series. I have a book series on Amazon, Megazoic, available for print to Kindle. There actually is an instance of a source in it. Really? Yes, in the fourth book, uh, when the main char- when these characters meet uh, one of their characters' family. And by the way, kind of a long story, all the dinosaur families in this, they're all different species. It's how it works in the society. So it, it, it explained how it works in the book. So it's basically a way be- to have like a bunch of different species of dinosaurs. Maybe there's an incisivosaurus to kind of show how redneck his family is. <laughs> like there's, there's an incisivosaurus that's like, Pa! These guys are trooting our territory. Get them, Pa! Get them! <laughs> Get them, Pa! I love it. Yeah, so... <laughs> all right, all yeah. right. So, anyways, all right, well, that's it for this week. See, see at the end of every episode of Paleo Bites. Uh, get them, Pa! <laughs> get them, Pa! They're trying to take away our rights as the stray white men. They're trying to take away our guns! <laughs> <laughs> and I need all 700 of these. Anyways, bye. Bye.